I want to love you beyond things. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year. It is 2022. With the New Year's comes new camera equipment and a few different new editing styles and some things I'm going to be trying out. Multiple camera angles. Hopefully it's going to work out. That is why this video is a little bit delayed. So thank you for bearing with me while I learn some new equipment. I'm very excited to be doing another lotions and potions episode. If you didn't check out my last one, I posted it about a year ago. Um, we touch on how I create a coffee, coconut, vanilla, scrum diddly umptious body scrub. It is still one of my go-to so I will link it up here in the cards. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a toner as well as a makeup remover. I started my own journey into creating my skincare products from scratch and at home for many different reasons. Uh, it kind of created a perfect storm in my life to prioritize doing this. I was going to move in the zero waste direction for all of my bathroom equipment stuff, my bathroom cabinet. So my skincare line and the things I was choosing to put on my face was just another thing on the list, as well as getting into herbalism, studying different plants, wanting to be as locally oriented as I could be, knowing what is going on in my body. I have a big aversion for chemicals in general, be it in processed foods or on things I put on my face. So uh, creating my own skincare stuff from scratch has just kind of been the easiest way to ensure I'm happy with what I'm using on my skin. With the way my spiritual practice works, I can safely say that I am constantly trying to look for creative ways to integrate my spirituality into everyday mundane things. Or in other words, I try to make very mundane activities magical. <laughs> this does not always work. But what I mean by that is making my uh, skincare infused with herbal magic and associated with the moon phases that are going on, tying in all of these deeper meanings that I pay attention to in the world makes very mundane, boring things like washing your face a magically infused ritualistic time. I'm going to show you how I create a toner and a makeup remover from scratch with a lot of products that you probably have kicking around in your kitchen cabinet, as well as talk to you about the different herbs and flowers and the reason I choose these ingredients. We're gonna cover mundane things, like if they're anti-inflammatory, but I'm also going to touch on some folklore and some magical correspondences as we go along as well. On that note, let's head over to the desk and we'll get right to it. Whenever I am trying to imbue something with my intention, be that skincare or while I'm cooking or even something more along the lines of an actual spell, it's always important for me to set the container. I light some candles, get some incense burning, make sure that my space is relatively clean and tidy so I can focus, and I use my bell to do a sound cleansing. Once the general space, tone, mood, vibe, if you will, of the space is set, I will get into cleansing individual metaphysical tools that I'm going to be integrating into my working. The energetic theme I'm working with for my toner and my makeup would be love, beauty, and protection. So I'm using my black obsidian and my rose quartz, making sure that they are clear of what I'm asking them to bring into the space, which is the frequency of love and protection. I will also cleanse myself, holding the energies of protection and love clear in the forefront of my mind while I prepare my toner and my makeup remover. Our first recipe today is going to be the toner. This is an incredible recipe because it is two simple ingredients. There is nothing that you can do wrong. You are simply going to be mixing 50% rose hydrosol with 50% witch hazel. There is going to be no ill effects of mixing this wrong. You are not going to harm yourself, which is why I say this is a perfect beginner's product to start with. Rose is often used in its skincare. It provides a lot of moisture. It's quite cooling. It has anti-inflammatory as well as antibacterial properties, and it provides exceptional relief for things like eczema, acne, and psoriasis. We're also going to be using witch hazel. Witch hazel is an astringent and is used as a toner for this reason. It helps clear oily skin, decreases swollen veins, minimizes the size of pores. Because we're using witch hazel in skincare, today we're going to be focusing and drawing in its protection aspects. Closing our pores, sealing our skin off from dirt, toxins, and anything else that might be trying to penetrate our lovely faces throughout the day. Rose is associated with love on any level. 
It is the highest vibration of all floral allies that we have because it is in such clear alignment with the frequency of love. The equipment you'll need to create this is whatever vessel you're planning on holding this toner in, as well as a funnel if that vessel has a smaller opening like mine does. Today I'm going to be using an old liquor bottle that I've saved. It is a Saint Germain elderberry liqueur, super delicious in cocktails. If you have not tried it, I would highly recommend. Whichever bottle you end up using, make sure you give it a good clean beforehand and then pour your witch hazel and rose hydrosol right into the container. Like I mentioned earlier, you're not going to mess this up. There's no improper ratio that's going to result in any kind of negative effect on your skin, but get it as close to 50-50 as you can would be my recommendation so you can get the benefits from both the rose hydrosol as well as the witch hazel. That's it for the toner, now we're on to our makeup remover. For this makeup remover, you're going to need one tablespoon of coconut oil, one tablespoon of witch hazel, one tablespoon of aloe vera gel, and five drops of rosehip seed oil. If you don't have something like rosehip seed oil, then you can use vitamin E oil. The vitamin E oil is incredible for your skin and also acts as a mild preservative to help increase the shelf life of this makeup remover. I try to create recipes where I use the same ingredients in diverse ways. This makes sure that I'm not wasting anything and that I use my money wisely and maintain that sustainable focus in my skincare products. I'm using the same witch hazel that I used in our toner. Aloe vera, it is an incredible plant. It lightens blemishes, it's extremely smoothing, it reduces infections, it's moisturizing, cooling. We are also using rosehip seed oil. So we're using rose again, but a different part of the plant and in a different format. Rosehip seed oil is extremely hydrating. It helps hold moisture in the skin. It can be exfoliating and can help brighten your skin. It boosts your collagen formation, reduces inflammation, and helps protect your skin against sun damage. Damage. There are a lot of different types of coconut oil. Whichever one you choose, make sure that it is one that stays in liquid form at room temperature. You do not want this to solidify. It's extremely hydrating, it protects your skin, it smooths your skin, helps minimize the look of fine lines and wrinkles, and it is absolutely loaded with antioxidants. If not as a main ingredient unto itself, I use it as a carrying oil to infuse other kinds of medicinal flowers or beneficial herbs into a product. The coconut oil I'm using in this makeup remover is actually infused with chamomile as well as calendula, both of which I grew in my garden over the summer. When using chamomile in skincare, it helps accelerate cell and tissue renewal. It also protects against free radical damage, therefore reducing signs of aging. We're also working with calendula. Calendula encourages the production of collagen and is often infused and used in salves for things like eczema and psoriasis. Magically speaking, calendula is associated with wealth, potential, opportunity, money, the sun, passion, creativity. It's also referred to as the sunshine herb. Because we're using chamomile in a makeup remover, I wanted to use the meditative, calming, and sedative properties of chamomile to really soothe my skin after kind of scrubbing to get off the makeup. Now that we have covered the ingredients, we're gonna talk about the tools you might need. You're gonna need something to mix this product together in. You'll need a funnel to get it into the cute bottle that we're using, as well as a spoon for mixing. Again, a Saint Germain liqueur bottle. And some measuring spoons. Normally I'm not one for mixing first and then putting in a bottle, but because the ingredients that we're going to be using will do a little bit of a reaction and change the texture and consistency of our product, it's important to be able to mix it in a separate bowl. First we start with a tablespoon of our chamomile and calendula infused coconut oil. and then we add in our aloe vera gel. Magical associations when it comes to aloe vera, 
are protection and healing. This makes a lot of sense when you look at the aloe vera plant. It's quite pokey. It looks rather protective. It's got a thick skin, if you will. And it's also extremely healing. People use aloe vera internally and topically all of the time. It is a huge plant ally. Because we're using it in a makeup remover, we're actually going to be calling upon both of these benefits magically and setting the intention for the healing properties of aloe vera as well as its protective properties to come through for us. And last but not least, five drops of rosehip seed oil. I would say using and working with the rosehip seed oil is almost more potent energetically than simply working with the rose hydrosol because it is in a compact seed form packed full of life-giving energy. It can be extremely powerful and lend us a lot of that self-love goodness that we're looking for. Now we mix. You're looking for a few things. You want the aloe vera gel to integrate fully into the witch hazel and the coconut oil. You're also going to be looking for a change in color. It will become quite white and the consistency will be a lot smoother. Once you have achieved this consistency, Grab the container or the bottle that you want to store your makeup remover in, get the funnel, and slowly begin adding the product to the funnel. There's a few different ways I suggest doing this. You can either aggressively tap the funnel and allow the gravity to work the product's way through the funnel. You can shake the whole thing together, again, relying on gravity. Or like I usually do, you can gently just tap the top with a spoon until it goes through. As you can see, I work through a few different ways to get the product through the funnel. I was really committed to using this cute bottle that matched the St. Germain bottle I used for the toner, so I am totally fine with taking my time and using my spoon. You can see here the texture and the consistency that I was speaking of. This is a perfect creamy consistency and I really like this makeup remover because of the consistency of it. Often when you're using makeup removers that are oil based, you have a lot of running to contend with and I find it messy when actually using the product. With this product, it stays very allocated to where you put it on the cloth you're using and it doesn't run all over the place. So you're not wasting it and you don't kind of get it in your hair or all over your skin unless if you want to. Because of the consistency though, it does take a little while to fill your bottle. If you're using a narrow spout bottle like I am, I'm okay with that because I wanted my bottles to match and to me it's worth it. So while I am getting the makeup remover into the bottle, I'm thinking very clearly about the cleansing, protection, love frequency that I want this makeup remover to hold for me. And I'm holding that in my mind until I get the whole bottle filled. And there you have it. We have two matching adorable St. Germain bottles, one filled with toner and the other filled with makeup remover. Ta-da! I think my favorite part about both of these things is the perfectly matching bottles. I, like I said, carried this guy around for around three years and have not used it until this moment for this makeup remover. It is the perfect size, it holds the three tablespoons, like, it's ideal. Ideal. 
it is a whole new level of satisfaction when you save a jar for however long you save it and you have the perfect jar for the perfect product at the perfect moment and the stars align and it's just perfect. I can't express to you this level of goodness. It feels so good. Now, this guy, honestly, it's two ingredients. It's so easy. Again, bottle, 10 out of 10, so happy. Thank you to my friend Cody for having a gender reveal party in which I snuck this out of a garbage took it home with me and have now used it for my toner. <laughs> uh, there is nothing that I have ever created for my skin ever that I use more than Rose Hydrosol and Witch Hazel mixed together. Perfect toner. Um, even if you have makeup on and you just missed this, I have some in a mister as well. I use it for when I go camping or traveling. It is like the best thing in the summer to wake yourself up. It is so magically cooling and invigorating. I want to be able to go back in time and give my 19 year old self rose water when I was in Southeast Asia so I could spray it on myself and feel cool for the first time in a month. That was a lot of information. Moral of that story is that it is incredibly cooling and I use this on my skin constantly. I wake up, I rub this on my face, even before and sometimes instead of using any type of skin cream or oil, this will be enough for me. I'm very lucky to have neutral skin, it's not excessively oily and it's often very blemish free and I am thankful for that. Anyway guys, these are, in my opinion, perfect, especially the toner if you're just getting started in creating your own skincare or you want to dabble in some lotions and potions. These are very safe, very easy. You can even mess up the measurements and the ratios and you're not gonna be doing anything wrong or harming yourself. I guess the final point slash tip I wanna drive home in this video would be to make sure you're taking every opportunity you can to infuse the oils that you're using with therapeutically inclined plants, flowers, herbs. There is so much goodness that we can layer in and so many different ways to include our intentions when we're creating products like this for ourselves. I hope this video was fun for you. I hope you learned something new. I know I really enjoy sharing these kinds of recipes and different tips and tricks on how you can integrate your more magically inclined world with your mundane one. It's also a great way to use the flowers you grow in your garden, which is French kiss. Chef's kiss? Both? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below, my darling friends, if you decide to make either of these recipes. As always, may the force be with you. I hope you have a fantastic start to your 2022, and I will see you all back here with another video shortly. Bye-bye.